the plans. All building jobs start with the plans. Ray Boxall, the old school architect we use, nice pen and ink drawing there. So what we got, we got new bedroom, we got a larger kitchen, we got a downstairs cloakroom, we got an upstairs ensuite bathroom. Basically quite a lot to do really. And this is the hip roof that we got. I prefer a, a pitched roof to a flat roof wherever possible because in my experience, flat roofs can be trouble. Water runs downhill. So a good bit of demolition, here we go. Nobody underneath. Boys taking a rest. There's the building gone. And then the dig. Now what we found is lots of made up ground, lots of old rubble, as much as we dug, it just caved in. It was all horrible really. And it was pouring the rain. So we got the muck away. We decided that we might as well dig a cellar. We're down that far. We thought before we came to any decent ground, it was that deep. So we thought, why not put a cellar in? So little change of plans. So this is the first of six muck away lorries, basically a lot of ground coming out of there. And then the concrete going in, all in one pour. We've got a pump in because we didn't want to trundle all the concrete around that, what you can see is rather an awkward site. So we've got the pump, the boys are in and they wanted to flow it all in from one side. They said, yeah, that'll flow round. They weren't right, it didn't flow round. I had to pump it like mad, agitate it to get it to flow round to the other side. It would have been better off if they'd moved the pump, but they were skulking in the shade at that point. Didn't quite go according to plan. We leveled out all the datum points along the trench with a laser level, spent ages doing that, getting everything spot on. And then when the guys came in with a concrete pump, they poured it in, and at the point where we just about reached the level we needed and I went stop and the point where they actually turn the pump off and that hose empties that's about a quarter of a cubic meter so what it meant is that we finished up with way too much concrete in the trench all our levels went to pot and we spent yesterday leveling out the top topping it off with some more concrete and setting these battens up so that we got the whole thing level but it's level now so the next thing we want to do is we want to set up our lines for the brickwork. Now, it's very, very important when you're building anything that you set things out properly because if you get it wrong now, it goes on throughout the job. In other words, if you start right, you finish right. And if you start wrong, by the time the guy comes to put the roof on and he's measuring out to cut his rafters and he notices that the brickwork is running out by half an inch, it means every single one of those rafters that he cuts has got to be cut differently. So you see what I'm saying? Get it spot on, spend time. It doesn't matter if you spend a day setting it out because that day is an investment. So I'm gonna crack on, I'll show you how to do it. Now, I've got to emphasize that what we're setting out here is not the levels of the brickwork. That's done when we put the corners up. What we want here is to work out the line of the brickwork. In other words, where it's going to go, how far away from the building, so we get it in an absolute straight line. The levels we can do with a laser level later. So, all we need is a couple of battens in there, and we work out where the extreme edge of the brickwork might be which I reckon is about there. That's in. And the other extreme of the brickwork is about there. So we go outside of that. This is our cross bearer, so we're gonna afford to go up to there with it. Now the reason that I don't use just another piece of batten as a cross piece is because what you don't want is any tendency for this to rock like that. Because if that rocks even slightly sideways, you can see that you could be throwing your brick line off by about two or three millimeters. So it's important that you use something that will allow it not to rock. You can see that's not quite square in the ground. That doesn't matter. We're not worried about it being level that way. But what we are worried about is getting more screws in here to stop it rocking. That's why I've used a bigger bit of timber there because we now need to put one in there and another one on the other side. I 
and then you'll see that that now doesn't have a tendency to rock backwards and forwards. Now we need to get the drawing and work out how far away our brickwork is from the house. Okay, so even without my glasses, I can see that that says 1.95 meters from the existing building to the outside of the new brickwork. Now he's great, this guy that does my drawings, Ray Boxall, because he actually puts measurements on it. Loads and loads of architects and different guys, they've given up putting dimensions on the drawings so that they can't be blamed for anything. But I hate that, because it means you've got to scale off the drawings to try and find out the measurements. And right down in the corner of the drawing, it says, do not scale. So what are you supposed to do? But anyway, Ray, good man, old fashioned. He does his drawings with a pen rather than a computer, but he does a nice job. So we've got 1.95 to the outside of the brickwork. We've allowed a tiny bit for the thickness of the render, because that's where we want to finish. And the key here is that we've got a next door neighbor here. So the planning permission has allowed for that dimension, which is nearly a meter, not quite a meter, but it gets to be a meter there. But that's what the planning permission has given us permission for. So we're ready to go. We know that the brickwork is 300 millimeters overall. That's 100 mil of brickwork, 100 mil cavity, and another 100 mil of brickwork. So if we go on there and we mark that one up as well, and actually what we can do if we want is to mark this batten back, save ourselves a bit of time as well. So 300 millimeters is there. So that's right. So when we check, looks pretty good to me, boss. So we stick ourselves a screw in. Okay, so that's one at one end. Now we need to do that at the opposite end of the building. And we also need to put one this way so that we can get the line in for the wall there. But once you've seen how to do one, the rest are basically just a repetition. Now I've set an identical form up the other end to this one. You can only guess roughly where it's gonna be, but we just normally sight them through so we get them near enough. But obviously you need to make it wider than your brickwork and then you've got a chance of hitting it. So I run the line down all the way to the end. And this is where you need a glamorous assistant. If you can't get a glamorous one, get Stephen. Two mil to you. That's it. Okay. Yep. Right, there's our loop. Turn it round, hook it on. Now, if we need to tension that more, we can do simply by pulling this line up and pulling that one down, do you see? You can get loads and loads of tension in that. Middle C, I reckon, being a musician. And then once we've got that, just pull it back there and it's locked off. So I've measured 300 millimeters, which is the width of the wall from outside to outside. And now I am gonna, I've put a screw in there. So now, if I just turn this round a few times. So we've got that roughly where we want it. Now I can run the line back. Now, if I measure those lines anywhere down here, they should be parallel and they should be the same distance off the building. So we can do a quick visual check.
And funnily enough, if we find that it's not right, it's as likely to be the building that's not straight as it is anything else. So I've got my marks here. Do you know what? I'm happy with that. There's probably a millimetre in it. But as I say, that could be the brick. If I go to a brick, the next brick along, it's probably spot on. Now, the only reason we need these lines is because the next thing we want to do is we mix up a bit of mortar and we slap it down on that foundation there and then we take our spirit level or plumb bob whatever you want to do if you want to do it like the romans did it you use a plumb bob a bit of lead on the end of a string basically but anyway what all we do now is to line that up and mark it off at the bottom now it's a windy day and even though i've really tensioned these lines they're still blowing around like bilio so it's not the easiest day to do your setting out but we do it and once we've got those lines set up we've got those marks on the foundations we can begin to put the corners up on either end of the building and then basically once the corners are up that's where we get the laser level out and level through and then all we're doing is running the brickwork between the two corners laying to the line so that's it that's the first little introduction and uh, don't forget, we'll be back soon. We've got plenty more coming up on Skill Builder. This extension is going to take a few months to complete, so you'll be able to see it step by step. And if you're not a subscriber, if you become a subscriber, we'll keep you automatically updated with all the new videos so you won't miss an instalment of the extension. And there's a lot of tool tests and other things coming up as well. I'm Roger Bisbee. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.